Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Spirituality with Gabriella. So today we are talking about how to manifest someone back into your life. Now, before I get started with this video, I want you to know that this is actually a very tricky topic and not something that I talk about in great detail, and there are a couple of reasons why. Number one, I think that this can be damaging if you're trying to manifest somebody who is not good for you. And so for this video, as a quick disclaimer, I want you to take full responsibility of your decision and know that if you are trying to manifest this person back into your life, I have full trust and confidence that you have chosen that and that that is something that is right for you. And so please know that it's really important to take this decision seriously. This is not something to take lightly. This is like very intense energetic work that you are about to embark on. And you should be manifesting somebody who is genuinely going to improve your life and going to expand you. When we manifest someone, we do not want to come from a place of neediness or a place of desperation. However, today I'm gonna to be talking about the common journey that people go through when they are manifesting someone back, someone that perhaps they had a relationship with in the past, someone where perhaps they had a falling out, but they still really love that person. I'm gonna talk about that in detail so you understand the common steps that people go through and why it is so important to understand the journey that is common in this situation. Now, as another disclaimer, keep in mind that the journey that I am presenting to you is just something that I have observed through my clients, through working in coaching and energy work for a very long time, but I want you to know your journey might be completely different. And so what I'm offering up is simply an example of the patterning that I see so that you don't feel alone. And so that if you're experiencing these emotions and you find yourself in the first half of the journey as opposed to the end where you've manifested them and they're back in your lives, you will know that this is normal. This is something that a lot of people experience and it took me a while to understand the pattern I was seeing in my clients. But now that I do understand it, I think that I can help you a little bit in terms of how to really master this and also to know that you're definitely not alone in this process. It is a hard process and it is something to be serious about, but hopefully this helps you. So first things first, I have written a framework and this is literally just me writing on a piece of paper. So I hope that you like it. I'm gonna talk you through the different stages that are common in this journey if you have fallen in love with somebody and now you want to manifest them back into your life. So hopefully you can see this. So it starts with an event and then you fall in love. So what I mean by event is that perhaps you went on dates, perhaps you um, got to know each other in some way. I assume so if you've fallen in love with them. Just as a disclaimer, if you're watching this video and you've fallen in love with someone famous that you haven't met or something like that, this is probably not the best video for you. This video is specifically for people who have met their person in person and have already made some memories with them and already have this beautiful dynamic going on. Maybe, you know, you've already fallen in love. And so now we're gonna talk about that. So if any of you have read the book, Attached, there is a period of withdrawal sometimes. And this is very common in relationships where one person tends to be more anxious attachment style and the other person tends to be avoidant. So anxious people and avoidant people tend to be attracted to each other, which makes things a little bit tricky. If you're anxious, what that means is that you seek love, you seek connection, you seek consistency. If you're avoidant, what that means is that you tend to pull away when you start getting close to people. And so part of the reason why there might have been this withdrawal phase is one of the two of you was anxious in the relationship and decided to withdraw instead of lean into the relationship. So if you were the person who was on the receiving end of that, meaning that the partner was the one who withdrew, you will probably most likely go into a phase of questioning. And this can spark a lot of anxiety and at times disbelief. And what I mean by that is you'll start having thoughts like, oh, maybe they don't actually really like me. Maybe I was wrong about our connection. Maybe I was the only one who had those feelings. Maybe they found somebody else. Maybe there's somebody else who's a better match for them. Maybe I'm not attractive enough for them. Maybe I'm not emotionally stable enough for them. As you can see, the thoughts go on and on. And what we really want to do is, first of all, acknowledge those thoughts. And secondly, recognize that we are in a stage. And this stage is what I like to call the anxiety and disbelief stage, which means that something in you has been triggered by the other person's actions. And to a certain extent, although this is a really hard pill to swallow, you have given yourself permission to let the other person control your reality. 
for just a moment. You're literally giving your power to the other person and you're saying, okay, this other person did X, Y, Z. Therefore that provokes all of these feelings within me. And so that is the first part of this journey where we want to pause. And we want to ask ourselves on a really deep level, are these things actually true? Because in nine cases out of 10, if you felt a connection with someone and you felt that it was mutual, you were probably not wrong. It probably has nothing to do with you. It probably has everything to do with the other person's emotional coping skills. So for example, if you're anxious, the other person is avoidant, you're simply different styles. It doesn't mean that you're right and the other person's wrong. But what it does mean is that you're coming at the same situation from completely different angles. And so what's really important is to acknowledge the facts. For example, you can say to yourself, I fell in love with this person. This person has withdrawn from me. However, it is also equally as important to not give the other person your power. Do not start falling into the rabbit hole of, oh, maybe they don't like me. Maybe I'm not good enough. I'm going to talk about this in a little bit more detail because I'm sure you're sitting there and you're like, but what if that's true? What if they actually don't like me? We're going to talk about that in more detail, but right now let's table it. So after you get to this phase, which is the anxiety and disbelief phase, now we need to do something which is called clearing your field. And what I'm talking about when I talk about clearing your field is you need to energetically, externally clear away anything that is not serving you. Let me give you an example. Normally, when I'm coaching a lot of women and the man that they've fallen in love with has gone away, they have a tendency to try and seek those same emotions from somebody else. Meaning that maybe they start going on a bunch of random dates. Maybe they start forging connections with other men. And what that usually manifests in, just being honest, is frustration. Because they're trying to find the same emotions that they had with the first person, with all of these other people. But very honestly, those people are random people and they are not gonna give you the same emotions you had with the first person. They're just not. It doesn't mean that you can't fall in love with someone else. Of course you can, but you're not in the right emotional space to harness that relationship. It's just not gonna work because you're going into it with blinders already. You're telling yourself, well, I was really in love with person number one, and now I'm just trying to distract myself and I'm trying to seek those same emotions elsewhere. And so normally what happens, and many of us have been through this ourselves, is that we actually get frustrated because it feels like we're investing our time and our energy in all of these different people, and yet none of them are fulfilling our needs in the same way that the first person did. Now, I know you could argue that the first person didn't actually fulfill your needs, but what I'm talking about is the electric magnetic connection that you had with that person, the thing that made you fall in love with them in the first place, that is not being replicated in all of the other people that you're meeting. And so what's really common when I talk to people, especially women, is they'll say, oh, I went on a lot of dates and the, they were really nice. I really, really liked them. They were so kind, really enjoyed hanging out with them, but I just didn't feel it. So if you're just not feeling it and that's starting to cause frustration for you, another sign to pause and to regroup. And so what that means is now you're gonna have to clear your field externally. When we clear our field externally, we are just clearing distraction away from our lives. We're actually ridding our life of the energetic chaos and drama that can surround ourselves. So what we wanna do is we want to, A, probably stop going on dates for a while. Why? Not because you don't deserve love, I'm not saying that. It's because you are not in the right energetic and emotional space to attract someone new into your life. You're just not. Why? Because you're still anxious, you're still in disbelief about the first person. And in many ways, you're not giving all of those new people a fair chance because you are not energetically open to receiving them. You're simply looking to use them as a stopgap instead of using them as a real relationship. You're not actually trying to cultivate that. You're literally just trying to find love and get a quick fix. That's honestly the truth. It might sound hard, but that's the truth. So now what we want to do after stopping dating is we want to think about all of the energies that we're surrounding ourselves with. So take a look at your life. Who are you interacting with on a daily basis? Who are your friends? Who are your family? Who are the people that are in your life? And are they filling you up? Yes or no. If these people are not filling you up, that's really important to take note of because you're already in a fragile state. And so right now you need the most positive influences in your life possible. 
So start by clearing your field of any energy vampires, anybody who is bringing you down, anybody who causes you to feel a little bit negative about yourself. That is just not the type of energy that's going to be harmonic for you if you're already in this situation. So now that you have cleared your field externally, we go into the next stage, which is release. And this is all of the internal work. So now there's going to be emotions coming up. This is going to be everything from revisiting the situation where the person withdrew and that can spark feelings of anger. It can spark feelings of resentment. It can spark feelings of self-consciousness and really questioning yourself. But now because you've cleared your field externally and you only have positive influences around you, you are going to be in a better space to actually investigate those emotions. And so my advice is to first of all, witness what is coming up. What are all of the emotions that you're feeling? And you really want to list all of them out. If you're dealing with a lot of anger, a lot of frustration, a lot of unhappiness, depression, anxiety, you have to acknowledge those emotions instead of pushing them away. Every time we try and push emotions away, it's literally like trying to shove a basketball underwater. It is just going to come up and rise up even faster and even stronger later on. So now we have to sit with the emotions and this is honestly the hardest part, but what you're doing is you're energetically saying, okay, emotions, I see you, I hear you, I feel you, and now I am deciding to release you. So it takes time. This is a process. This is not something that happens overnight. For some people, this takes months. For some people, this takes years. It is probably not going to take days. I'm just being very honest. Let's say that you and this person dated for three months and then they disappeared or whatever, or you're probably looking around that amount of time or double, honestly, that you need to take stock of your emotions and you need to work on a lot of healing. So this is the time at which it would be really advisable to get coaching, to do inner child healing, to invest in a new hobby that gives you alignment, such as yoga, for example. Whatever you choose is up to you, but this is a time where you need to go into the discomfort as opposed to leaning away from it. And the reason why you're doing this is because you are literally clearing your energy from the inside out. And so we want to go to the root causes of things, which is why inner child work is really beautiful to do at this point in your journey. I'm going to take one moment to talk about inner child work here. So let's say that this person went away and you don't know why they went away and you're feeling a lot of neediness and anxiety. Well, there's a common thing that we call the abandonment wound in inner child work. So if at any point in your childhood, your parent was not there or your parent was absent or your parent didn't fulfill you emotionally, what that manifests in is later on in life, you often look to other people to fulfill your emotional needs instead of resourcing those needs within yourself. And so at this point in the journey, it's really important to do inner child healing, to look to the root cause of all of these issues. And so you begin to realize, oh, that's why these emotions are coming up. And you also begin to realize it's not actually the other person's fault why this happened. You simply were not in the right space to energetically resource yourself and something within that, something about that drove them away or they just didn't have the right resources emotionally to deal with your relationship. And if that is the case, by the way, that is a gift from God that you two are not together because you don't want to be with someone who doesn't understand how to emotionally resource themselves. And so what you're doing in this part of the journey is you're energetically leveling up and you're energetically cleansing yourself on a very deep level so that you can become a vessel for love, a vessel for a stable, committed, loyal partnership. So after all of that, now you are going to manifest. So this, you know, has already taken some time. It's been months, perhaps it's been years, who knows? Your journey is your journey, but now you're gonna wanna manifest. So now you're in a space where you feel more secure, you feel more grounded because you've witnessed all of the emotions that have come up and you've gained a level of comfort with them. So yes, your anxiety might look really ugly. However, you have become comfortable enough to say, yep, I had that and you owned it and now you're choosing to release it. And so now we want to manifest positivity because whenever we remove something energetically, we want to replace it with something positive, something fulfilling and expansive. And so this is when you're going to start to visualize. And the important thing about visualizing and feeling in the manifestation process is that you are literally tricking your brain into believing that you already have this thing. So that can look like every single day, visualizing you and your partner being together. And what's very important is you want to visualize your partner being the highest version of themselves. 
If this person had some problems or this person was not resourced emotionally or energetically, you don't want to visualize that same level of them in your life. Instead, you want to visualize them as being in their highest self, their highest state. And you can visualize whatever you want. Perhaps you're cooking together, you're going on dates together, you're watching the kids together, you're watching TV, you're going to the pool. It can be whatever you want, but try and visualize every single day. For some people, visualizing things that haven't happened in our 3D yet is extremely hard. And so you can also focus on the feelings that you experience when you're with this person. For example, feelings of expansion, feelings of safety, feelings of home, feelings of abundance. All of those things are really good things to focus on feeling. And if you're really doing this well and consistently, you're gonna begin to notice an energetic difference. At times when I've done this in the past, I can literally feel my heart buzzing and energy flowing through my body so strongly that it feels like it's real. And in those moments, it feels so expansive, it feels so joyful, and your brain will actually start to become almost addicted in a good way to these really positive feelings. You have mastered how to give yourself a dopamine rush in the best of ways. And this is something you have to be consistent about because what's happening here when you're visualizing and feeling these positive emotions is you are working on your own self-concept, which is just how you think about yourself. You're bringing yourself into a place of security and certainty in instead of scarcity and a lack of confidence. And so what you've done is you have successfully flipped the script from being in a place of anxiety and disbelief to now being in a place of certainty. And basically what happens is your entire mindset will shift because now you know that you deserve this you know that you desire this, and in many ways, you're feeling the emotions as if it's already happened. And so the last step in the journey is the reunite stage. So if you study manifestation, you will know that the universe is you pushed out, meaning that once you have gotten to the space where you are magnetic, you're attractive, you're confident, you truly believe in yourself, you're pursuing your dreams and your goals, you're visualizing all of these positive things and you're doing this consistently, you will notice that other people start to flock to you like moths flock to light. It's something that just happens. Not only will you get a lot of different offers from people, you'll start to notice interesting things shifting in your 3D reality. How this has looked for me in the past is people that I have perhaps dated in the past have come back to me out of nowhere, literally nowhere, and have told me that they fell in love with me or told me that they really missed me, all of those types of things. And so be open to signs that your manifestation is working, even if it's not from that specific person. So know that things are in motion and your field is now energetically clearing itself for that person to come back into your life. Now, one very important thing is that a lot of people at this point in the journey get distracted, right? Because yeah, they were manifesting that specific person, but now all of these other people have come into their lives and now those people are saying they're ready to be with them or they're in love with them or whatever. And they're wondering like, oh, well, maybe I should settle. Maybe I should just take this person. If you truly want your manifestation, if you are truly in love with that first person that you were going for, then look, it's up to you. But they, ideally you say no to these other people. Why? Because they're not right for you. You didn't have that electric and magnetic connection and that true love that you had with this person. So all of these are just signs that your manifestation is working and you don't want to succumb to just getting with just anybody, right? Unless those people make you really happy. Because one other thing is that throughout this whole process of manifestation, specifically manifesting someone back, it is possible that you change. It's possible that you change your desires, that you change your reality. It's really, really possible that you might change your perspective and suddenly you realize, oh, I was so stupid. One of those really nice people is actually a great person and I would love to be with them. And if that's the case, and if if all of this stuff has made the first person seem really lame in perspective, then please be my guest because you are now energetically resourced to have a real relationship with all of these other people as well. It's up to you what you choose with this other person as well. So it's up to you what you choose. But if you're still truly in love with the first person, you're going to say no to all of these people. You're going to say no to the offers that are not serving you. And you are going to continue to manifest them until the day that you reunite. Now, there are many different people who have been through this process and it is magnetic. It works. The reason is because you are literally magnetizing the other person to you 
And in many ways, you are doing what people call living in the end, which means you are living in the end state, you are happy, perhaps you see yourself as married, perhaps you see yourself as having a house and kids, whatever it is, you see yourself as having that loyal, committed, stable relationship. And from that place of deep security, the other person has no choice but to mirror that back to you. Does it take time? Yes. This is not something that you can do in like three days. I don't really care what anybody says on the internet. It is stupid to try and manifest something in three days because no real relationship is built in three days. I'm sorry, it's just not. So you are gonna have to be consistent and you're gonna have to prove to yourself that you have a much greater level of persistence and willpower than you ever thought possible. And that is how you manifest that person back. You're gonna manifest true love and before you know it, you and that person are experiencing the happiest moments together, moments of joy and expansion and possibility. And also this time it is even better because you've manifested a committed relationship. So I hope that this helped you. I hope that you understood everything that I shared today. If it helped you and you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, share it if you feel so inclined. I will be making a lot more manifestation content, so comment any requests down below. And I just wanna wish you so much love and luck. This is not an easy journey. It takes a lot of persistence. It takes a lot of willpower, but I know that you can do it and I fully believe in you. All right, I love you, bye.